So we are here at South by Southwest in Austin, Texas, and this is Senator Al Franken. Uh, first off, let me thank you so much for, for taking the time to speak with us. Oh, my pleasure. Um, so you're here today, first off, uh, to talk about what you've called the most important free speech issue of our time, which is net neutrality. Do you want to yeah. give us sort of the, the gist of what you're planning to speak about today? Well, I'm talking about net neutrality and what it is and what it isn't. Mm -hmm. But what it really is is uh, keeping the Internet the way it's been, open and free, so that uh, when consumers consume um, uh, ma uh, material on the internet, it comes at the same speed. So mm -hmm. uh, your blog gets to them, to a, a user, as uh, your content gets to them as fast as um, the New York Times, as fast as Fox News. Uh, if you had a mom and pop hardware store, its website gets to you as fast as Ace Hardware and on and on and that's the way it's been and that's been uh, the source of tremendous innovation and, and of what the internet is and um, my concern is is that as there's concentration of media and uh, fewer and fewer companies own the internet service providers uh, there is the fear that they will do paid prioritization, have a faster lane, and essentially uh, consumers will be getting really content that's paid for by large corporations that can afford the faster lane. Mm -hmm. And that is why I asked uh, then Judge Sotomayor in my first series of questioning, is this a First Amendment issue? And she said, yeah, and I, I believe it is. Because um, you know these these mega corporations that will own the pipes and that do own the pipes will have you know certain uh, in you know uh, political interests that are aligned, and uh, I worry that eventually all the content the yeah all the content will be under their control. So what's the current status? I know a lot of our readers have really been following what, neutra what net neutrality is, but as far as like where, where it's going in Congress, I know the FCC just passed some rules in December, and there were some issues with that that you, sure. you wanted to, to, to strengthen those rules. <clears throat> yeah. And now the House has voted to deny them the funding they need to, to implement exactly. those rules. So can you give us just a quick update on where things stand and what you guys are doing? Because I know you, you're in, uh, introducing a bill to try to, to strengthen the FCC's rules. Yeah, well, uh, the FCC, of course, is part of the uh, executive and, and a regulatory body. So they issued these, these rules which I didn't think were strong enough. I especially didn't think they were strong enough on wireless. Mm -hmm. um, and, but of course, uh, the House um, uh, defunded their, their ability to, uh, supposedly their ability to enforce these rules. And now they have um, uh, an act uh, that would actually reverse them entirely and say they overstepped their bounds and uh, that I don't think will pass in the Senate, um, and uh, I, with with Senator Cantwell, Maria Cantwell of Washington, I've introduced legislation. So we legislate it. So you know, then, then you don't have the argument over <laughs> uh, does a regulatory authority have th does the FCC have the ability to regulate? Uh, the internet. So should this legislation be sort of the, the rallying movement behind net neutrality? Because I think this is one of the issues that I think has been a problem for the tech community and then the general population in general, is that you hear about net neutrality, but it's so confusing. And I think this is something that's that's been done on purpose by the opposition. The but content of net neutrality, I mean, the, the idea of what net neutrality is or where we're going. Bo to both of them. Both because you've got, you've got, first off, <clears> people trying to figure out what net neutrality is. And I've talked to friends who are generally well informed, but like, oh, you know, it's, it's not a big deal. And then you take the time to explain it to them. Like, oh, this seems like something we should really care yeah. about. Well, uh, part of it is, of course, the disinformation that comes from the other side. They say it's the uh, government, uh, you know, taking over the Internet. And really what, it, what it, it's designed to do is keep the Internet exactly the way it is. So you'll hear things like you heard in, in the, uh, 
the House debate on this, which is like, we've had all this innovation and job creation under the internet without net neutrality. And you go, no, exactly. and uh, no, we want to keep it the same. We, we, and uh, we want the information flowing, at, you know, um, in an open way. And um, so I think there's, there's been some deliberate misinformation put out, but that's nothing new. Mm -hmm. And um, so people have to understand that this really comes to the point where if a number of, of large corporations control essentially the pipes for all our information and are allowed to do what they want to do and essentially charge for sending the information out to folks, uh, to the consumer, you, we could ha and, and charge for different speeds and that you, we could have a situation where we, we really have four or five uh, companies controlling all, all information. And that really is very dangerous. And so that's, it's just really as simple as that, I think, and if, if I explained it well. And uh, so this is the First Amendment issue of our time. And sure, the Cantwell, or Frank and Cantwell, or Cantwell Frank, and I don't know what we're calling it, if, if that bill is a rallying point, yeah, so be it. So how important is it at this point for, for mass awareness of what's going on, like the, to get a lot of the public behind net neutrality? Is it a little, does it really matter at this point? If, if it absolutely a, does matter because what you have is these corporations have lobbyists mm -hmm. and with Citizens United they have the ability to pour as much money as they want into the system. So it's absolutely crucial that, that people get involved and they can uh, go to, uh, actually, you know, what is my website? Franken.senate.gov. Oh, just my, okay, I know that. <laughs> Franken.senate.gov is my website. You can get information about it. I thought we had a one, a net neutrality one, but uh, Franken.senate.gov and uh, to get more information about it. it we, uh, we do need, uh, the, I'm speaking here at, um, at South by Southwest to the in, uh, interactive uh, festival mm -hmm. because these are the people, the entrepreneurs, who I think will have a real impact. I think we have to save the internet through the internet and mm -hmm. that's what we're trying to do. So. And I had one last question that's that's sort of switching gears here that's mm -hmm. also related to technology. Yeah. Uh, I believe it was last week or, or recently you wrote a letter to Facebook mm -hmm. over their new privacy policy that would allow third parties to access user phone numbers and addresses with consent, but it, it's still something you objected to. Do with you with consent is always like... You click yes, basically. Uh, yeah. Who reads it? Um, so uh, what I worry about is when you get an app you can, the app can, can get your uh, phone number, uh, your, I'm sorry, your address and uh, your name. And what I worry about is, especially kids, mm -hmm. you know, 12 to 17 year olds, uh, that this, this, this information can be used to get your uh, home address, uh, uh, your, just every, all this different kind of information about you. And I think it's not help. It's not good. Uh, you know, it's not good do for. You, do you think this is is Facebook overstepping its bounds more so than it has in the past? Because I know in the past you've actually spoken out against some of Facebook's privacy policies, as right? As instant personalization. Yeah. Is, is this? Do you think this is worse than what they've done before? I I, I don't know if it's worse or not. But I, I just asked, I wrote wrote them a letter asking them uh, at least to uh, not let this happen with with kids, mm -hmm. but really to try to, to rethink the policy completely. Mm -hmm. So I, I know you've got to get going because you're going to give a talk to everyone yeah. here. So thank you so much, Senator Al sure, Franken from TechCrunch TV at South by Southwest. And thanks again. I, I work out every morning and do my crunches uh, with TechCrunch. <laughs> tech with TechCrunch. <laughs>